and going to the TSA, like, I want to get grape jelly and just throw it in my bag. And I didn't think about it in the hotel room. I'm like hurrying, getting packed. I'm through the grape jelly in there, and I can't believe I'm even discussing this. Gerald, oh, by the way, we're going to do five minutes of overdrive here, and then the whole next hour, David Knight's going to be hosting the new fourth hour we're bringing back. Cold War heats up as Russia media stops calling Russian troops little green men and admits boots on the ground. They've been there for years. Kerry keeps upping the number of migrants, he says, from Syria. It's now 85,000. What's behind the rise of Fox candidate du jour, Fiornia? Pope coming to America preaching climatology. I love that. And socialism. Autobots and talking cars ready to roll. Autobots transform and roll out. Gerald in Arkansas. You're on the air. Thanks for holding. Go ahead. Oh, hey, Alex. Congratulations on the money bomb. I, that proves to, to, to those of us who are true believers that God is uh, the one that's there supporting you so you can get this. Uh, he, so he can use you to get this uh, end time message out. So, Well, God bless you, brother. And thanks for putting up with me when I'm goofy in the third hour sometimes. But yes, sir, the fact that we got a million dollars in will really help us. Uh, with a satellite and reach tens of millions more. It's a big deal. It's a big responsibility. And I'll do my best not to let you down. God bless you, sir. Okay, well, one quick thing. Uh, the the terminology of, of, of uh, our English language has been uh, perverted. That's why we're having such a hard time. Yes, sir. I mean, that's why we can't communicate with a lot of people now, because the language has been changed, altered, or reduced. It's it's scary. Anything else? Yeah, think about it. The word legal, the word lawful under the common law, it's not called common legal, it's called common law. They bastardize it. Now everything is legal tender, but the constitution says no state shall make anything but gold and silver as a payment of debt. So so if Satan has twisted this thing around to where it's all upside down. Absolutely. Upside down world. We're going to come back in 70 seconds. Some stations carry it. It's the fourth hour. Infowars.com. We are back live broadcasting worldwide. Final segment uh, where I'm hosting. David Knight's coming in to cover a host of issues and to take your phone calls and more in the fourth hour. We're bringing back. Some days I'll host. Some days David Knight, Rob Dew, uh, Paul Watson, and others. But before I go any further, here are my good buddy and personal trainer Pat Riley hanging out with us. I misspoke earlier when I said Super Male Vitality is going to sell out soon. It has sold out. It could be months, unfortunately, until more of that comes in. We did a huge 30% discount. People went crazy, and there was some huge surge yesterday, and it sold out what was left. We will sell out of Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2 uh, in the next week or so. We will sell out today of, of the Deep Cleanse. We do have the incredible Knockout Sleep Aid. We do have the Hillary for Prison T-shirt. All of your purchases make the broadcast possible. Thank you for your support. Infowarslife.com, Infowarsstore.com, or Infowarshealth.com to find the great longevity line as well. Uh, but Pat Riley riding shotgun with us. Chris in Kentucky on Jesse Ventura. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. Hey, Alex. Um, I just got to say, I've been listening to you for about four years, and I love Jesse, and I've been listening to him for a while, but... It's getting painful to hear him. I mean, he sounds like he's gone full socialist. No, I agree. Uh, and I was telling Anthony Gucciardi and Buckley during a break, and I'm going to call Ventura and just kind of tell him this today because, you know, I've defended him. I like him. I think he's a guy who's for real. He believes what he's saying. But, you know, then when I'm arguing with him and he's getting most of the time, uh, it's kind of like some of the other interviews where folks then just don't like me arguing with him. And, and, and he really seemed irritated. Absolutely. And uh, he kind of just hung up at the end. And it was just kind of like, whoa, uh, because he used to be more libertarian. And, and I mean, you know, Bernie Sanders, as far as I'm concerned, can go to hell. Uh, and so can Hillary Clinton and all these people. You know, I went after Bush and folks, too, with Ventura. Uh, but he was more libertarian then. And uh, it's just, it's just, it's just, you know, I, I can see his angles on some political issues. But, I mean, our border's wide open. We're paying for everything free. And he said, well, don't be racist. You know, it's not the Mexicans that are going to get us. I never said that. And that's a, that's a cheap shot, you know, to play the race card. And uh, it's, it's that's why it, it's, it's very easy. Absolutely. Um, your mic was off. What were you going to say, Pat? It was an easy shot. Play the race card. Yeah, it just doesn't work anymore, though. 
But folks see the demographics, and there's this this idea, not by Ventura, but by the media, that that they're going to turn Hispanics into this racial block. And so you submit to the Borg, and that's the new culture, and then you give your culture up. When it's just, that's not a, it's not a melting pot that's being gone with here. It's a political conquering led by a Latin American communist pope. Everybody's getting in line for the new power structure. And guess what? I'm not doing it. Anything else, Chris? Yeah, you know, one other, it, it kind of seems like he would be, uh, Jesse would be one of those guys on the piers answering the wrong question of Mark Dice. And speaking of that, he Mark Dice is another guy. I mean, he went by Mark Shill Dice. He used to sh uh, sell books on how to pick up chicks and how to mind control people. And now all Oh, I don't think that. I read his books. I don't, and he's attacked me before too, but I don't care. I, I just don't care. I love it all. You know, I love Ventura, I love Mark Dice, okay? And, and if your name's Scholl Dice, you, you boil it down and say Dice. Uh, it's like a German slash Polish name. I mean, you know, it's whatever. And, and you know what? I love it when Mark Dice, uh, you know, uh, got mad at me and stuff and attacked me. I mean, it made for great entertainment, and I forgive him, and it's okay. I mean, I just don't care. Look, he produces really good stuff. He he does funny things. Everybody grows. Nobody's perfect. And, and Ventura, I, I mean, I like Jesse. Uh, but I tell you, he is taking a big leftist turn. I like the guy that doesn't like both parties. I like the guy that wants to expose 9-11. That's the guy, you know, who, who wouldn't shut about the war and got fired from MSNBC and lost, you know, a lot of money. I mean, I admire him for stuff like that. So I like Ventura. I just think he can't handle me arguing with him. You know, I think that's the issue. And so that's fine. Um, listen, I'm out of time. Uh, we'll be able to get to Dion, Scott, and Tim if you want to hold over uh, when uh, the great David Knight, who folks want to run for president, is coming up. And then later in the week, Paul Joseph Watson is going to be hosting the fourth hour and more. And the nightly news tonight, 7 o'clock central, prisonplanet.tv. Pat, thanks for coming in, bro. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. Stay with us, ladies and gentlemen. The transmission continues. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show, the wrap-up and overdrive of the fourth hour. I'm David Knight, your host. We've got a host of issues here that we're going to talk about. One of them, of course, is an article that's up on InfoWars.com today. Half of Americans believe the federal government to be an immediate threat to freedom. My question is, why so low? What is it that they don't understand? When you look at the situation we just had uh, Alex Jones reported about yesterday as he was flying, he was hassled, detained for 35 minutes, searched, lectured, threatened. Maybe they put him on a no-fly list. Who knows? Because they don't tell you if they put you on a no-fly list. You're not allowed to know until the next time you try to fly, and then they take you off. What did he have? He had a bottle of grape jelly. What did they think that was? <laughs> what, what, what does grape jelly look like? That is a possible threat. I, I really don't understand. Did they think he was trying to ship live anthrax? No, that's the uh, Department of Defense that does that on a regular basis. Or weaponized bubonic plague. No, they did that as well. Shipping that through UPS. They don't fly commercial airlines. They use UPS uh, to ship their live bioweapons in the mail. But what if he had shown up at the airport with a suitcase bomb like... Ahmed uh, Mohammed, the 14-year-old kid, or I think that's his first name, his last name is Mohammed. The 14-year-old kid that Obama is going to honor at the White House. What if you took something that looked like that to the airport? I'm not recommending you do it. They will probably uh, haul you off and no one will ever hear from you again because we don't have anything such as uh, due process anymore in this country. Can you imagine if you took something like that to the airport and ran it through their screeners? I mean, maybe they wouldn't notice. I mean, it, it is, after all, security theater. They, it might just sail through and nobody would pay any attention. But if it did get drawn to their attention, I guarantee you, you wouldn't get an invitation to the White House. I guarantee it. And, of course, as we've mentioned over and over again, Obama has no problems whatsoever with an out-of-control police department that is encamped in our schools. I can't even believe that we have that in the schools. I, I would... It is so far removed from anything that I grew up in, anything that my wife taught in, and that was just a couple of decades ago. We are so rapidly falling into tyranny. I can't understand why only half of the people believe that the federal government is an immediate threat to freedom. It's not a threat. It's already taking your freedoms. It's already telling you that everything you have has to be sacrificed to national security. Not just your money and taxes, but also every right, every bit, because your rights are property as well. It's not just your money, your property to go to pay for an out of control government that is involved in war after war after war. And I want to talk about that in just a moment. But let's first talk about the boogeyman in Russia. 
Of course, this story came out on uh, RT, and they're talking about the government there is going to ban GMO food production in Russia. They have already put, uh, they've already banned the importation of GMO food. They said a, a group of MPs backed by parliamentary majority party United Russia drafted a bill that severely restricted the imports of genetically modified agricultural produce and completely banned its domestic production. Now, this is uh, after they say this draft has not passed through the parliament. But later in the year, the state Duma approved a package of amendments imposing fines on businesses that sell products containing GMO without adequate labeling to warn consumers. What a difference. What a difference. Why is it that in this country, even people who typically stand for informed consent and stand for choice, stand for freedom, people like Rand Paul would support the Dark Act. That's what we call it. Telling, uh, forbidding state governments from telling people honestly what's in their food. We're not even allowed to know. So not only are they are we allowed to have this stuff put into our food, they're going to try to ban it in Russia, but we have people who are trying to facilitate it, trying to hide the fact that this is in the food. Why do they not want it on the label? Because people don't want it in their food. It's just honesty. It's not over-regulation. Because the government should be there as a referee to, pre to prevent force or fraud. That's what I agree with as a libertarian. I think government ought to be there as an honest referee to stop people from robbing you, using force on you, or ripping you off. When they steal from you, when they deceive you, then they ought to go to prison. If we're going to use government, that's what we should use it for. Have an honest open, free market where people know what's in their food, but they call it the Safe and Accurate Food Act. It's not at all that. It's an attempt by the federal government to shut down any information about what's in your food, and it is a violation of the Tenth Amendment. When Rand Paul was defending this, he said that uh, he was torn between the two because there were really bad uh, pieces of legislation that were working their way through in the state legislatures, but he didn't like the idea that the federal government was going to do it. You know what? I don't either. Because the Tenth Amendment does says that unless they specifically are given that power, they don't have the power. We ought to be eviscerating the FDA. If you ran on a, on a platform where you said, I'm going to stop the FDA from withholding drugs from cancer patients, that would be huge. You hear me, Donald Trump? I mean, you're about the only one that has the courage to say something that radical because the rest of these guys are just going to tow the corporate line that we've seen from the big mega establishment. But, of course, that establishment, interestingly enough, is uh, pushing hard to get Hillary Clinton in. This is an article up on InfoWars today. Establishment Democrats are working hard to push Clinton over Sanders. Now, this is an organization, and we've, we've seen um, not only... Are they pushing to get her in? But also there, uh, in many cases, some of the bigger ones are, some of the bigger corporations are starting to abandon Clinton. They certainly don't want Bernie Sanders. They're concerned about Bernie Sanders. I don't think that he's controllable for them. But I think that Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton are. I think Joe is uh, Biden his time. I think he's going to pop into the race when we see that Hillary Clinton uh, drops 20 points in a South Carolina poll. That was on September the 9th. Uh, we see that the person that picks up those is not Bernie Sanders there necessarily. It is Joe Biden who seems to be picking up this. So the establishment, I think, has got two horses in this race, Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden. And I think that they're going to put themselves behind Joe Biden at the end. I think there's a lot of people who, even though Hillary Clinton is very well connected with the Democrat establishment, I think there's a lot of people in the Democrat establishment that are afraid of her that uh, perhaps uh, the Clintons could blackmail. I think they're afraid of that mafia. So they look at somebody that probably they could deal with a little bit more easily, like Joe Biden. And I don't support him. I mean, this is just politics, gamesmanship that I see happening here. Now, the article that we have that uh, Kurt Nimmo wrote today, he said a CNN orc uh, poll, O-R-C, I guess the orcs, I guess they're polling orcs, I don't know. Uh, conducted between September 11th and the 19th. If that can be trusted, Clinton is supported by 42%. Bernie Sanders at 24. Joe Biden, who is yet to declare his entry into the race, is at 22%. Just two points behind Bernie Sanders. That's why I think he could rapidly take over. Because, look, this, this is a guy who you have to ask yourself, how in the world 
did a guy from the smallest uh, state in the union who doesn't really bring any voting block or any connection there. He certainly had to be politically corrected, uh, connected to get in as the vice president 